Hey there, YouTubers. It's Don from True Cable coming back at you again. This time we're going to talk about couplers. These are inline couplers. What that means is, is that they don't snap into a patch panel or into a typical wall plate. So it's basically essentially an oops device. Let's talk a little bit about couplers. So I've got two here, one shielded, one's unshielded. They're both category six rated. The thing is, when you're using couplers, it adds a little bit more disruption into your overall channel. So you need to keep the amount of coupler use down. Generally, I recommend no more than one coupler per channel if you want your channel to, to continue working at the speed you expect it to work. And there may be some uh, companies out there that literally prohibit the use of couplers anywhere in their building. And the reason why that happens is because, let's say Bob, uh, five years ago, 10 years ago, got some inline couplers to connect up a printer because the, he didn't have a long enough patch cord uh, to reach from the wall outlet. So he bought Cat 5e couplers, thinking that was more than enough. And then the building's cabling changes to Cat 6a, and now we've got random Cat 5e couplers running around out there. And, that could cause a lot of trouble for your IT department. So there's some places that won't even let you use these. However, uh, if you do have a quick hookup need or a oops moment, and you can't buy a longer patch cord just yet, then these are a great way of solving a problem. So the unshielded, very straightforward. Um, just use unshielded cable in it and you should plug in a patch cord on one side and a patch cord on the other side. And now you've essentially just doubled your patch cord length. And now you would plug in this end into your wall jack and you know your, your wall, your keystone, or directly into a switch or something, and then the other end into the end device. Very straightforward. With unshielded couplers, do not use shielded cable. Now, the reverse is not true for the shielded couplers. With shielded couplers, you can use shielded or unshielded cable as you see fit. Obviously, you know, if you're buying shielded couplers, you're buying it to use of a shielded cable. So how do you tell a shielded cable from an unshielded cable? Easy, one's metal and one's not. So uh, in the case of the shielded coupler in line, it's just simple, plug in a patch cord that's only this long on one side. You, you know, you needed a, a six foot patch cord and you only got two threes. Well, now you're going to have a six. And there you go. So it makes a, a quick, easy fix for oops moments um, when you don't have a long enough patch cord and you've got one on order. I would recommend though that you keep your use of couplers down, like I said, and just get longer patch cords that are the right length when you get an opportunity. You should use factory pre-terminated tested patch cords with them. One other consideration around couplers, especially if you're terminating solid copper ethernet, you know, that's meant for like permanent installation. If you attach RJ45 APAT plugs by hand to your Ethernet cable, one here and one here, and you need to join them. Each hand terminated RJ45 plug can induce yet additional errors and issues into your overall channel. So not only will you have a potential problem causer here, but you might have a problem causer in the middle, which is the coupler, and then yet another problem causer over here. So you just tripled your possibility of problems by a factor of three. So factory pre-terminated, pre-tested cords when it comes to using couplers, that is the best practice. So that pretty well covers inline couplers. There's really not much to them. Use them judiciously, use them wisely, use them with factory pre-terminated patch cords. And with that, I'm gonna say you have a great day. Happy networking.